This is the audio test. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the South Florida Gamers podcast. Oh, hit, forgot to hit the record. All right, now time to redo the intro again. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Back to again with another episode of the South Florida Gamers podcast. I am your host, the Silverback Senpai. Uh, joining us is, you know, my co-host, Waluigi. Good. Nah. <laughs> Close enough. I know. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> teasing, teasing. It's your boy Waluigi here. AJ's currently on the way. Currently MIA. And looking forward for this episode today. <laughs> and yes, and our guest is none other than Ultima Wielder. What is going on? Hey. Back again in the hot seat, this time as a solo guest interview. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's it's an honor to be part of your podcast. It's good to have you again, man. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's good to have you again. Thank you. And, of course, you already know this episode of the podcast is going to be available on Spotify, SoundCloud. Well, not SoundCloud. Rip. And all, <laughs> yeah, I know, and all other audio hosting platforms. So just Google South Florida Gamers Podcast, and you guys are going to see us there. And also, video playback, as you're currently watching, we are currently live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. So if you are new to e either of these channels or platforms, go ahead and give us a follow. Subscribe while you're there as well, and you know support the show. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start off with our guest, and that is Ultima Wilder. And like in traditional fashion here on the South Florida Gamers Podcast, we always ask, "What is your gaming background? Give us your gaming origin story. Like what what made you become a gamer? And give us that line that hit that history line of." Where you started to where you are now. Damn, this is real lore. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Uh, everyone's ready to hear the Ultima Wielder lore. All right. <laughs> um, this may sound crazy. It all, this is going to sound crazy. It all started back in uh, 2002. I was still just like a tiny baby, like this small. And, you know, I was just spending time with the family. And I was just in my cousin's room at the time. And then he had a, a PS2, the... Uh, one of the the oldest consoles out there, and one of the best ones too to this generation. The PS2 is always goaded. Real, it's, it's I love it. It's my one of my childhoods, and then it had a, he had a bunch of games there. But the one I remember, the one that was on the TV screen and that was on the game cover next to the console, none other than the base game of Kingdom Hearts One oh, wow. that released in two thousand two of September. I, I remember, like, oh, my gosh, what is this? With Disney characters? Hold on. This is blocking you. Uh, there we go. There you go. Cool, cool, cool. HD wheel review. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, would ju I just remember it w It was on that screen. Like, I, I, I was still a baby at the time, so I didn't think of, like, what is this? Until later down the road, I, I, I got a chance to try it out. I'm like wait this is cool and you know it's like it, you never expected like a company like square enix the people that own final fantasy to cross over with disney like mickey mouse donald duck goofy yeah yeah like that is the craziest crossover you can think of especially for a crossover that the whole thing started in an elevator by the way i should mention that the whole thing started in, with an in the elevator uh, when, really Yep, when um, Mario sixty Mario sixty four on the Nintendo sixty four was out, and one of the people at Square, one of the higher ups at Square, wanted to, you know, innovate from Mario sixty four, get like their own platform out there, and that's when they met one of the higher ups from Disney, and they said they decided to share their own ideas, and they just went with it. That's how the concept of Kingdom Hearts started. Wow! Really? Yeah. I've n I never knew that. Yeah. Elevator talk. That that's the, the whole thing started in an elevator. Like you you never hear about that kind of story. No, you no. actually don't. <laughs> yeah, which which is insane to me even to this day that the whole the whole thing for Kingdom Hearts came from Mario sixty four when you think about it, which is actually true. Actually, that's real. I've I've never thought about that at all. I'm I'm as I'm thinking when it comes to Kingdom Hearts, it's just maybe Square Enix approached um, Disney or some executive from Disney and talking about you know characters and things like that. And what if you know some of these characters were to cross over with these characters from our IP, like two different IPs crossing over to make one unique IP 
That is completely game changing. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, it is game changing. And to come as a shock, it did, it was a commercial success at the yeah. time, yeah. making it one of the greatest hits for PlayStation 2 at the time. It was, it was the game that yeah. everyone I, just saw and they had to pick it up. Yeah. I, I remember that. And I think I was about, I think I was maybe 12 or 13 or 14. I forgot how old I was when I saw it on a commercial, and I was just like, oh, this looks interesting. Like, I didn't see the gameplay, but it was just the... Was, was it Was it the... Cinematic um video. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I was just like, okay, this looks interesting. And then when you finally saw the game, I was just like, whoa. I didn't see, like, the actual gameplay. I think I saw the game in a magazine, and I was like, oh, this looks dope. This looks yeah. good. I saw that commercial on TV. I'm just like... This is real, and this is six-year-old me processing this. Yeah, no, like any anyway, at the time, if you were still young and you saw a commercial of that, I still remember the commercial of the Disney characters being shown and the Kingdom Hearts characters shown from cutscenes, and then just ending off with "You never know who you run into." Kingdom Hearts for the PlayStation Two. Bars. Yeah, <laughs> that that still hits to this day. But then, like hearing the title screen, that, that piano was so beautiful. Dearly beloved. Yes, like, they really Always. know how to make bangers. Yeah. Yoko Shimomura knows what she's doing. And then, like, that was the first time I heard about Utada Hikaru as well. Utada Hikaru. Mm, her yeah. music is so good. Chef's they, Their music so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's one of the games that I picked up, and I was so invested. It's one of, like, the games I got addicted to. And then... 2006, Kingdom Hearts 2, well, to, let, let, let me go back a bit. Chain of Memories was also there. Oh, the Game Boy Advance. Yes, Classic. because it was on the Game Boy Advance at the time when it wasn't on the PS2. Like, the only way people would play it at the time was if they had a Game Boy. It worked out. I mean, yeah. it, I, there are some things that are I was skeptical for the Game Boy version, but I still love it. I still love how it looks and... Just how the style of it looks on the Game Boy game is what sold me, honestly. I didn't love it at the time back then, but even when going back to it, I have a whole new appreciation for Chain of Memories. Because nowadays it's like people are love either love Chain of Memories or they are kind of skeptical and don't love Chain of Memories. But it's still it's still one of the coolest games out there. And then coming off from that is Kingdom Hearts 2. Another game that came out in 2006 in North America at the time, one of the, the, the both Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and 2 is what the games that were my childhood at the time. Those were the games that if I didn't discover this franchise, I wouldn't even be here. Yeah. Uh, I, what were you going to say, Waluigi? Oh, no. I'm impressed, actually. I forgot there was a four-year gap with Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, because you had, well, technically, if you were, technically, if it was Kingdom Hearts 2, you would call it Kingdom Hearts 3 at that point, because yeah. Chain of Memories is KH2. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. True, true. So. I, re I remember Kingdom Hearts 2 when I saw the commercial, and I was like, oh, they're making another Kingdom Hearts, and then this time, I think what what completely sold me and all my friends was that we saw Sora with two Keyblades, and I was like, yeah, this is the game. Yep. I remember going to GameStop on day one release when the game came out like it was so packed i remember this gamestop being completely packed with people and just walking out with gamestop receipt kingdom hearts kingdom hearts kingdom hearts or they'll walk out with the receipt the game and the book the uh strategy guide the book. strategy guide yeah, yeah. Oh, so that way they can um 100 the game and i remember me and all my friends we 100 kingdom hearts too we overplayed the hell out of it still to this day i still think Kingdom Hearts 2 is like the best Kingdom Hearts of all time. Like Yeah, it is. It you would see it everywhere. You would see it on Disney commercial you would see it on commercials. You yep. see it on Disney 365. Oh, God, yeah. that takes me back. 365, you see everyone talking about it. It was it was that game. Yes, like, it, it was. It, it was that game that you needed to buy for the PS2. Yeah, it was. It, it just became one of the greatest video games of all time. Oh, hi like, without a doubt. Yeah, like no, like anyone that played Kingdom Hearts can agree that Kingdom Hearts Two is the greatest video games of all time. Yeah, yeah. It it was there for us. Like you had to be there. 
But that was Base Cage 2, though. Like, yes. At the time, Base Cage 2 was good. And then we had Final Mix versions, which yeah. never came out until we got we either had to emulate it or we had to wait for the HD collections. Yeah, I remember oh, I that. I forgot about that. Yeah, Final Mix added um, more content to the game. To whereas you could fight the original, me- you could fight all members of the organization, and you would fight um, Lingering Will. I remember that. Yep. Oh, that was such a that was such yep. a. And it even had a an a dungeon. Uh, it even had more uh, levels, like the Cavern of Remembrance. Yes. Like I you had so much more this. treasure. You had so much to go through. It was definitely worth investing. Even going back to KH One, uh, there was also more content, but you could uh, what was it? You could fight uh, Unknown, basically, in KH1 Final Mix. I did not know that. Yep. No, Final Mix had a secret boss at the time. And the Final Mix, well, it also filled in, like, the cutscenes we never saw before and the secret endings, which would lead to the next game, too. Mm. And even when you would go and watch those secret endings, wow, how did they do it? Like, yeah, it still blows my mind, honestly. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2, peak, peak JRPG. Yeah, and I'm currently going through the franchise right now. Yeah, <clears throat> it's, I still love it. I as still love should, it. As you should. Yeah, because that game, that game was like revolutionary at that time. Mm-hmm. And granted, there were other um, JRPGs that were out as well. Like I remember Final Fantasy 12, which was really good. Yeah. Um, there was 12, there was 11, which was eh, 11, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, 12. 11. Because it was an online oh, game at the time. I yeah. God about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then there was 12, which was really good. Um, I'm still playing through 12. I have so many games to play, but I'm still currently metaphor just came out and sound hill too but i'm currently here just replaying my franchise at the my favorite hey, I franchise i don't blame you i don't blame you me can't at all knock what you enjoy yeah but game Hearts 2 man that that was the game and even if you have never played it i would say for anyone that wants to get into kingdom hearts of course you know you want to start off with one so that way you can get familiar with the game and then you know work your way through chain of memories and then play kingdom hearts 2 that's when you're going to be like Oh, this this is peak greatness right here. Like this is yeah. wow. The soundtrack itself, the fighting, like all the sceneries. Yeah, it, it, that game was just a plus across the entire board. That is a ten out of ten game. All all what makes what makes Kingdom Hearts really great and what makes it its own thing is just there. Yeah, you, yeah. You just pop. You just pop in the game. You see what. Makes Kingdom Hearts Kingdom Hearts basically. Yeah. Real talk. Yeah. And, and what makes me more happy is seeing people that never tried Kingdom Hearts this year has been going through it. I've been seeing on my timeline, everyone's been giving it a shot. And that's what makes me happy that they can just see experience what we went through at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And just get ready for Kingdom Hearts 4 and Missing Link at the time too. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. <clears throat> but um, continue. Yeah, no, like, <clears throat> sorry. I remember, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I was just a dick. I remember getting stuck in parts of the, the Caribbean, Port Royal. I remember because I'm like, I didn't know what to do. And then it's just, because it, it's not, it's just more than just pressing one button. There's more than just one thing, you know? Mm-hmm. There's Because if you're just coming off of KH1 and Chain of Memories, it's like, it's not just hitting mashing and all that stuff there's more to that and that's what makes it so unique especially with more depth to the gameplay and what makes it a great really because dry forms because dry forms in cage 2 was a welcome addition quick time events too yes. i should mention quick time events was what sold people yeah like it was such a welcome addition yeah to the franchise and ever since then it's just well we had some of it in like Birth by Sleep, but until Remind to Cage Three, which I think that was the last time that we had Quick Time events. No, the it's it's what sold everyone on this franchise, and yeah. after after two, it's been more games that are not Kingdom Hearts Three. You had thirty five eighty two days on the DS. You had Birth by Sleep for the PlayStation Portable. Oh yeah, Recoded for the DS. You had Union Cross, which at the time was on computer in the Japan, and then eventually it got to mobile for everyone. 
and then you had Recoded for the DS. By the way, that is my favorite DS game right there. It is peak because after finishing 3582 Days, I love the story. I'm not really a fan of the gameplay overall. Yeah, a lot of people are not a fan of 385. That gameplay, no. It was, it's like, just give me, for me, it's like, I don't want to have to go through this again. Just give me the story and that's it. Yeah. I'm just here for the story and that's it. I'm, I'm like, no, nah, I'm never replaying this. Usually, you know, as a Kingdom Hearts fan, you would replay the game all over again if you really enjoyed it, but. That one in particular, no. And it was the same with me with um, Chain of Memories as well because it, I wasn't a fan of the whole you know card game system or whatnot. I yeah. wasn't a fan of it. But, um, yeah, I was like, nah, I, I ain't going through this. No, yeah, because the people, like, they would want to skip Chain of Memories because they don't want to, like, explore different options for your card deck. That was the thing with Chain of Memories is let's go gambling. Let's go gambling. It's that <laughs> like people some people I think is that they don't want to go through the uh the organizing your card decks to see what's the cheapest way to cheese through bosses. Like I went back to Rechain of Memories mm. while replaying it on Steam. Again, I have a whole new appreciation for the game. Like and I understand not everyone likes it, which I understand. I really don't blame them. But it's all about organizing and seeing what suits your deck best because it's not because it's not just because if you're coming off KH1 and you're just pressing cards, 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 pre- just pressing the X button all over, it's not there's more to what Chain of Memories is all about. Yeah. It's it's not again, it's let's go gambling. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what didn't like I was not a fan of it. That's why I was just like Eh, I, I like you beat it once finally and it's like yeah I ain't playing this again I'd rather play something like similar to Kingdom Hearts 1 or even get Kingdom Hearts 2 just give me one of those two or something in unique and I remember after the events of Kingdom Hearts 2 you see the end trailer you get the true ending and it's like okay I cannot wait for Kingdom Hearts 3 I know this game is gonna blow my mind away and I'm from that generation where we waited for years, and I mean, oh, I think, what, over a decade for another Kingdom Hearts game, or at least a Kingdom Hearts 3. Granted, you had um, Birth by Sleep, which was on the PSP. Wasn't a fan of that, but I did play it. Wasn't a fan of it, the fact that it was on PSP, but it should have been on console. But with the HD collection, yeah. it did make it its way, so that gave people opportunity to play the game. Like, thank you. The, the, the one thing I am sad about is the fact that multiplayer for Birth by Sleep is not in the HD collections, which kind of makes me sad. Here's a fun... I, oh, you don't know. Here's no, a, I here, don't. Here's a fun fact. Uh, Birth by... So, thirty the whole multiplayer, I will say... The whole Kingdom Hearts multiplayer, I will say, started with Chain of Memories Game Boy, actually. So, the thing is, you had to have your own save data if you want to play with people. And in Chain of Memories, you can basically do it out with your friend, basically. Oh. Like, not many, I think not many people knew about Chain of Memories having the Game Boy uh, multiplayer. No, I didn't. This is the first time I'm ever here. I I remember having those cores that you just plug into another Game Boy to another. Yep. Link cable. That's what it it was if you wanted to play a game like uh, Mario Kart. That's real. I didn't know. Wow. Yeah, Chain of Memories had multiplayer. Not many people talked about it because it's such an underrated thing. In Kingdom Hearts multiplayer, like the only multiplayer you would find is something like, I guess, Union Cross. And then now there's going to be Missing Link. But uh, yeah, no, multiplayer is like, oh, you just get together with your friends and it's just have fun. And then it carried across to 3582 days. And how it works is, you know how in the solo story, you would do your missions as an organization member collecting hearts. Now... You can tackle on these missions with your buddies. And it's up to four players, by the way, for 3582 days, mm. which is really neat. Like, you just go across doing all the missions. It's a lot of fun when you think about it. Despite my problems with the gameplay for 3582, as much as I like the character building and the panels, multiplayer could still be fun with friends. And then Birth by Sleep carry that with Mirage Arena. And I think it had more than what the other two had. Like you can battle out with, you can battle your friends oh, out. Okay. You can race. You can play even Kingdom Hearts' own version of Mario Party Command Board. What? 
Yeah, there's a yeah. there's I, a command I, board. Um, I never knew this existed. Yeah. Then again, command board is like a way to like unlock abilities throughout to play the game and such. Oh. Because like, Birth by Sleep gameplay is way different. Instead of just yeah. like, instead of just using your magic points, you have shot logs, and then you had sh- yeah you had shot logs. You have D links, which you use separate uh, builds from other characters you meet when you forge a link with them. It's a lot. It's pretty good. Like, Birth by Sea gameplay is a lot of fun. I will yeah. mention that. Terra, Terra gameplay, I'm, I, I was kind of skeptical back then, but I actually really enjoy Terra a lot, despite his uh, heaviness with his uh, sliding mechanic when you fight the unknown and you're just going to get hit 24-7 nonstop. <laughs> but uh, going back to Mirage Arena, is it had PvP. You can even fight the Unverse. You can even fight the... If you had the Final Mix version, you could fight the secret bosses in uh, huh. Mirage Arena with your friends. That sounds terrifying. That is interesting. Yeah. It is. It's a lot of fun. And then, yeah. No, m- multiplayer is, was something. And then going to Recoded. Technically, multiplayer is there, but it's technically like going through the datascape. Mm. Yeah, and then completing objectives. But you get to customize your avatar, though. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Dream Drop Distance. I know that is a, that is on um, one of the King of Mars games that was on the the 3DS. The 3DS. You played that one? I was there. I was on the train ride for Dream Drop Distance. I had my 3DS, and oh my gosh! Because I remember that was that was the one King of Mars game. Like I didn't play a lot of handheld ones, and I didn't own a 3DS at that time, so I just skipped out on those. I would say for me, it was Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, Chain of Memories. Um, I played a little bit of 385 Days and a good amount of um, Birth by Sleep. But, um, yeah, Dream Drop Distance, that was on the 3DS. I was like, bro, I don't even have that. And I was like, okay, I'm done. Just let me know when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. <laughs> like, give me that. Yeah. But go on with Dream yeah. Drop. Dream, Dream Drop Distance, I remember. Th- that was the game I was so excited for at the time. I remember picking it up at GameStop, and I would just hop on it. I remember. That was, like, the at the time, that was, like, the one Kingdom Hearts game, game I would grind and replay at the time. But not Critical Mode, because Critical Mode was... I couldn't even get past the, the first Dream Eater boss at the time. No, dream, 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 dream Drop Distance at the time, it's like, it's good. People are skeptical of, like, the flow motion and, like, I th- there were some things that were good, but the most broken thing in Dream Drop Distance was Balloon. Balloon? Balloon. So if you had many slots of Balloon, Balloon, Balloonra, Balloonga had much damage if you what put them all spell together. What is Balloon? It's, it's balloon. That's it. Yeah, but there's balloon. There's balloonra, and there's balloonga. Man, imagine someone getting introduced to Kingdom Hearts, and they just find out what kind of spell that is. Just balloons. That sounds cute. I mean, it, it works. I think people were kind of skeptical. Yeah, balloonga was dumb. Like even especially against the secret boss Julius, which uh, another Disney mm-hmm. mascot. I forgot what film it was at the time, but uh, yes. he was a secret boss, and that was the uh, that was the easiest way to get through to get the Ultima weapon, which, by the way, Ultima weapon is where my handle name came from at the time. Both uh, Ultima wielder is Ultima weapon wielding the Ultima weapon. I get the reference. Yeah, yeah. Anyone would get the reference if they played uh, Kingdom Hearts at the time, but Jake Joe Distance was good. Like I still loved it, and I'm kind of getting close to it, so. Which spell was more broken? Uh, I'd probably say it's a mix between Reflecta or Balunga. Because Reflecta, you can re- you can just repel through anything. Yeah. It's just like parry. Like, yeah. Or Reflecta. Like imagine, a fighting, imagine a fighting game had Reflect and you could just avoid about anything. You could even avoid a command grab maybe. Oof. People would not be happy about that. It's a good thing we don't have Sora in fighting games. I, except Smash. Okay, Smash is fine, but I'm not. I, I just want him in a fighting game. Where I can, yeah, I, 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 a yeah. traditional fighting yeah. game. Yeah, I, I just want him in a. I want him in a fighting game that I would be grinding, and then I would maim him until until I die. That's it. Okay. 
your thoughts on Kingdom Hearts 3? Because for me, when I played Kingdom Hearts 3, like for me as a fan, I was like, finally, after so many years, after so many trailers, after so much hype, we finally get something of Kingdom Hearts 3. I remember watching it on a E3 um, press conference when they sh- finally showed like Kingdom Hearts 3. I think it was um, back in 2015. Uh, so that was, yes, it was. So at the time, uh, when E3 2013 rolled around, they announced, of course, Final Fantasy 15, which at the time was Versus 13, the, the mm-hmm. canceled project. And then that got rebranded to 15, which oh. everyone was kind of was pretty shocked about. And then next to it was Kingdom Hearts 3 at the time. It was in... Yeah, I, re- I, I remember losing my mind when Kingdom Hearts 3 was finally shown. You see Sora. You see Sora doing all these crazy moves. I'm like, yo, they made Sora look so damn overpowered. They made him built different. Yeah, yeah. like it was so good. And then, of course, the Keyblade changes um, when um, like when an action happens. And after that, he's pulling out these two guns and shooting them off or whatnot. Yeah. And then it transforms into a big rocket launcher. Yo, it was it was hype. Yeah, I re- I remember at the time after the game uh, after the game got revealed, they even showed their D twenty three gameplay, which was like a alpha kind of thing. Even showed like the pirate ship, which is uh, what people call it is a uh, quick situations, quick uh, quick situations. I think that's what I forgot the name. And yeah, no, like people were very interested. And then you had the uh, another section was like riding on the train in the Olympics Coliseum, and yeah, and then radio silence again. Twenty fourteen, I remember, was when the HD collections were coming out at the time, and Kingdom Hearts three got teased, and it was showing behind the story and such. And then twenty fifteen was when the gameplay showed along with Tangled getting revealed to the world tangled and yeah. big hero six at the time yep. like people were excited for it and then we didn't wait until 2017 was when the whole ride started with at the concert and d23 again everyone i remember i was there well i wasn't there there at the event but i remember watching it everyone was excited for toy story like toy story was and everyone was blown away with that. And yeah. then next to that was the release year at last, 2018. Yes. I remember that. And then radio silence. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> Febu- Feb- February was when, at the time, we were, I remember everyone in the community was staying up to uh, for that trailer. And I couldn't stay up, so I went to bed. And then in the morning, I woke up, and I'm like, oh, 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 trailer, 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 trailer. Because that was one of my most anticipated games at the time. You got Tango, and you even had Monsters, Inc. Yeah. Pixar Pixar World making it into Kingdom Hearts at last. Which, Monsters, Inc. works so well with Kingdom Hearts 3, I will say. Yeah. A A lot. And even showing one of the villains, too, Marluxia, Vanitas. Everyone was excited. And then... I remember, uh, I think it was like May or June at the time. It was after a concert. Out of nowhere, Kingdom Hearts 3 got its release date. And here's the shocking part. Uh, It was delayed. And I think it's because the fact that they had to work on the game, make it polished, all that stuff. And it worked. And yeah, E3 2018 was the time for King, to be a Kingdom Hearts fan. The Xbox yeah. showcase, the Square Enix showcase, the PlayStation showcase too. Info was flooded all around. Everyone was excited. Everyone was excited. And I was part of, and I was one of those people too. And at the time trailers kept rolling around, more characters showing and you know teasing what is about to be the the conclusion to the Xehanort saga. And at the time people got a taste of Kingdom Hearts 3. It was good. It was really good. I wish I went to Disney uh, Orlando to try it out. But at last, we get to January. January 28th, 29th was when the whole game launched. And the fire was spreading in the community. If you were a Kingdom Hearts fan and part of the community, everyone, like Kingdom Hearts 3 hate was nonstop. Like, you would not go a day without seeing people saying Kingdom Hearts 3 was a failure. 
in my eyes. Wait, it's there not. was a hate for it beforehand? Because it was it was the game that everyone was waiting for at the time. Yeah. Because like if you're just oh, coming off, because if you're just coming off like Kingdom Hearts two, which was like its own thing, because like it had so much more, and then Kingdom Hearts three, I still love it. Like it's still one of my favorite games, honestly. Despite the hate it gets and some issues, I will admit to be honest, but the hate was nonstop. Yeah, I, I remember it. I remember it well because I remember playing the game and then once I finally got, I would say for me, like I started to dislike the game when I was doing the Pirate of the Caribbean on part and then you're like driving around with the ship and I'm like, okay, this is getting boring. That's my favorite world overall. <laughs> I, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can understand, but I think... I, I hated that part. I can understand why, but I think... Can't be worse than the Last of Us Two hate. The Last of Us Two hate was worse. Oh yeah, that that, <laughs> that, that was one, that was wild. To, honestly, though, I will say, I mean, Cage Three did get leaked, which was the worst thing that anyone can happen. Supposedly, Wait, what was it, AJ? Oh, that I was part of that hate <laughs> for Last of Us Two. <laughs> <laughs> How many fucking times did they have to like do it? I re I remember the Last of Us Two hate. I will never forget that. Uh, yeah, I remember go go back going back to 2018. Basically, I remember the game leaked. And supposedly some mafia, this is still what blows my mind, some mafia boss got their copies of the Xbox version of Cage 3 and started posting leaks, <laughs> I think it was. But the saving grace was that <clears throat> that the uh, the team that, that said that in, if something like this were to happen, they would release the epilogue, the secret ending. Oh, on the, as a current patch, as the next patch, which was the mm. smartest thing I would have seen in a gaming industry. And honestly, if like if your game has gotten leaked, I think it's a smart move to just put out a patch where you add the epilogues and the secret endings, because the epilogues and secret endings are like the big things. Like if you see like a plot twist of what where the franchise, your favorite franchise goes from there, it's it's a big thing. And for a game like Kingdom Hearts, it's like it's crazy. But yeah, going going back. The hate was all over, and anyone who say they love KHD would get <clears throat> bashed on nonstop. And I remember getting sometimes bashed on for loving the game. Like I was skeptical about it, but after going back and doing like combos and stuff, I ended up loving it, and it was still one of my favorite games. I will say for me, where I st I, I told you the part where I disliked it, which was the Pirates of the Caribbean part. Yeah. That's where I started to dislike it. <clears throat> But as a whole, um, the game is not bad from gameplay from a gameplay perspective. It's not bad, but from like the story and the pacing, that's where I started to have issues with it, especially towards the end, the conclusion. That's when I'm like, all right, some something big is gonna happen. Big epic fights gonna happen. I know this is what Kingdom Hearts is. You know, very talented at is delivering that big final conclusion battle. And you know it's gonna be epic. You know you're just gonna you're you're sitting there and you're like, I'm ready to experience this. For me, it was disappointing because the fact that, for one, when this is a spoiler, even though it's been the games have been out for years, um, the part <laughs> where the part where Kyrie gets um, murked or whatnot, murked off or whatnot. What? No, I'm kidding. Yeah. There wasn't like there wasn't like a huge for me there wasn't a huge like reaction coming out of Sora. It was just like kind of like <clears throat> man, and I was just like, but what the hell? Like she's been training to be um one of the Keyblade on wielders or whatnot. She is one of the Keyblade wielders, and she just goes out like that. Like I was she disappointed. Got, she just with got one shotted. It. Yeah. Damn. She got captured and then one shot. I'm just like, what the f? That's like, yeah. wow. Then the other part where you're fighting against um the members of the organization 13, and I remember why am I beating these guys so easily when previous games I struggled against Zemnis, I struggled against Marluxia. The worst Marluxia was difficult for me to beat, and I just beat them like that. I'm like, what the hell? Was it was it Data Marluxia at the time? That you struggled against, or was it Marluxia in uh, <clears throat> AKH uh, Chain of Memories? Both. <clears throat> you wow. Both. But I would say Kingdom Hearts 2 Marluxia, the data one, oh my god, he was ruthless to the point where I had to dr use my drive form twice. Yeah, that's the funny thing with KH2 is that, <laughs> like, KH2 being one of the greatest video games, the thing that you can do, though, is 
limit form, you can cheese your way through it. Yes. Like, you can cheese your way through it. And that's like, oh, oh, okay. That's fun. But you know, when I go back, I love KH3 Remind bosses a lot more and how chill- challenging they are. But uh, no, yeah, no. For Kyrie though, I can understand that. But I think one of the things that people overlook and don't see is that like, she's not like a Keyblade Master. Like she hasn't been a Keyblade wielder long. And in KH three, like uh, KH uh, Birth by Sleep two point eight zero point two, was when uh, she started to go train with Axel at the time. So, yeah. Like, at the time. She's not like a Keyblade Master. She still has training to do, which is why she struggles in things. And Melody Memory, I could see it showing. Like she's not perfect at everything with like being a Keyblade wielder. Which, yeah. Which is why she still has training to do. Yeah. I it, think I think people overlook that and tend to like like hate on Kyrie sometimes. Yeah, and then of course the very final fight against um, Xehanort, which was kind of underwhelming. Because I, I wanted more. Because I remember after beating him, and I was just like, I wanted more. So what I did, I booted up the Kingdom Hearts um, um, HD collection, fought Xemnas again, and I was just like, I'd rather I'd rather fight a harder version of Xemnas on Vis than Xehanort. Like it, it did not give me that satisfying conclusion of a um, epic boss fight. And that's where I was like kind of disappointed with Kingdom Hearts 3 was that I did not get that feeling that I got when I played Kingdom Hearts 2 when you're fighting Xemnas at the very end. I think the one thing it does do a good job at is like the returning cl- characters, characters uh, the returning characters, the reunions and their moments. That's what I love and that's what people have been waiting for. The Twilight Trio, the Wayfinder Trio. Like, their reunions, everyone's reunions was, like, just so wholesome. Like, people have been waiting for those moments, and that's what makes that's what makes uh, Kingdom Hearts really great at the time. Like, like that, that they do a really good job at the moments. And the fights, they do good, too. It has its moments. Even when you get closer to the end or in the middle of it, it definitely has one of those greatest moments of what makes Kingdom Hearts really great. Yeah. No, I, I I agree with you with there right there. Like I'm not gonna say like overall as a series the entire game is bad. Like some people are you know <clears throat> saying it's bad. It's it sucks. They hate it, you know a lot of hate. I think because for those that grew up playing Kingdom Hearts since the very first one and they played the second one, our expectations were like really really high because we waited so long for this game to come out. It finally comes out. And we're just like kind of like a little bit disappointed that it did not meet the expectations that we had in our mind as gamers that grew up playing Kingdom Hearts. And it didn't give us that conclusion, that closure, and w- which was another thing that I was kind of disappointed with, the fact that 3 is not the end of it. So there's going to be another one, which is Kingdom Hearts 4, yes. whenever that comes out. Hopefully it's not another 10 years because I am pushing I was, 30. I was about to ask that. Because yeah. I, so. I am pushing 36, okay? I've been playing Kingdom Hearts since I was, like, in my teens. So on the bright side is that uh, because of KH3 taking long, it's because of the fact that at first KH3 was going to be using Luminous Engine, which is the engine that FF15 ran, but... They switched to Unreal Engine and had to start the development all over, which makes sense, to be honest. It's just why it took them six years to get the game out there, which uh-huh. makes okay. which makes a lot of sense. So with KH4, like, the reason why they put it out early was so to avoid the leaks at the time. Mm. A very step ahead of the game. Yeah. So with Unreal Engine, they know how it works now. Okay. So it's been announced then? Yeah. it's been It's been announced uh, two years ago. So they're still working on it while working on the the other mobile game, Missing Link, at the time. Oh, okay. But uh, going back to KH3, after there were some patches there, and um, this is where Remind comes in. Like, Remind, I remember, it was in the trailers, and people were excited. Like, the, the data bosses were coming back, and the story was continuing. And on top of that, you got a get someone very familiar from when uh does it doesn't it give you versus 13 vibes doesn't it give you versus 13 vibes it does yeah yeah it does but remind some people people really liked remind i think um it brought in more abilities 
that makes the the combat way more fluid and more fun and the data bosses are really challenging sometimes you can cheese your way sometimes you can't but they're more challenging and more fun than kh2 data bosses i will say though honestly because kh2 data bosses you can just cheese your way with things like fire aga you could do limit form you could spam all of that or you can have a keyblade and against lingering will just jump attack jump attack jump attack jump attack until the end of the fight oh until until you get until you deplete that hp bar but kh3 remind does really well osaka team did very well with the uh, the data bosses the challenging especially the secret boss yazora by the way a character that comes from verum rex in a surprising twist uh from toy story which is like what is this versus 13 and even the secret ending shows that it plays part of the the ff15 theme until it goes to its dearly beloved by the way in the secret ending when you collect all of the uh the lucky emblems but uh yeah no that's a that's a twist and uh that's when it takes off the saga. But I do. Men- I will forget to mention that uh, Melody of Memory does continue that story. It is a rhythm game, which the rhythm game, honestly, it's like one of my favorite rhythm games in a while since Dance Dance Revolution. And it continues the story of where Remind left off, you know, l- searching for clues of where to find Sora. And we find those answers and Riku goes on ahead. And then... We got a teaser about Scott at Kylum, and normally we don't hear about KH for a while. Well, we do get things like at the time, the PC version, which at the time was on Epic Games, the <clears throat> launcher that people didn't like because at the time for Epic Games, well, not at the time, right now for Epic Games, if you're playing Kingdom Hearts on Epic Games, you need internet for that. And having internet just to play a single player game is not good. So that's why people waited for the Steam version. And then... So for Smash, <clears throat> sorry, wait, not so, wait. Let me not. Uh, let me backtrack. Uh, Union Cross was still going there. It had its conclusion of the story, and then so so for Smash came in, which was the character that everyone requested. Even Sakurai knew it at yeah. the time. Like I was happy. I tried to get into Smash. Not the not the choice I would want to make. <laughs> <laughs> not the choice I would want to make. Smash. Like, Smash. He, he's still my favorite character to play. But uh, going back, it's like, it's fun casually. But if you try to compete it, it's not the best decision you want to make. No. Nope. Which is why I'm just like, I'm just going to play for fun. You know what? I, I, I've been playing Strive. I'm just going to quit Smash. I'm not even going to bother anymore. I'm just going to oh, play Strive. Yeah. I'm going to play other games. Play fighting games overall. Even, even playing Smash for fun is questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you just pop up and just immediately with the most base response. Yeah. Fuck Smash. Yeah. I have it. I love it. Everybody has Smash, but they don't want to touch it. And I hate it. As a matter of fact, I, have, I actually haven't touched this since I got my... Why, why my do I feel like a divorce is better than playing Smash? Yeah. I'd rather go Friend- through a divorce. Friendship. Ten times over. Friendship. At the, at the back then, friendship ended uh, with Smash Ultimate, Guilty Gear Strive, Hello. Back then. That was back then me. I was yeah. ready to say, this is where a story, like, where we start connecting everything. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... And then for, uh, yeah, after more for Smash, as 2022 rolled around, it was the 20th anniversary for Kingdom Hearts, you know, the game that uh, came out in 2002. Like, info was coming out, even like a teaser of that anniversary art from Tetsuya Nomura. <clears throat> that artwork, I still have it as my wallpaper, by the way. It, it's still perfect. Oh. It's still perfect to this day. I love the artwork. And even then... Let me put it in my camera. Let me put it to their camera. Ah, I got to delete every notification just to show it. Hide the evidence. <laughs> Hide the evidence. Uh, <laughs> this th- this artwork... Let me put it to their camera. This artwork is yeah. all brilliant. Yeah. Black screen, love it. <laughs> Black screen, love it. <laughs> However... Here's the crazy part. When everyone was going to the event that was taking place in Jiboya for the 20th anniversary event, it was just showing all the moments that Kingdom Hearts had. And when the show started, everyone was awake for that moment. Everyone was waiting for the live stream. But there was no live stream. But Ouch. info was coming out. But, excuse me, there was in the morning, early in the morning, 
a trailer for the 20th anniversary showing uh, the Dark Road final episode, Dark Road, another mobile game, showing the uh, the story of Xehanort at the time. I hate the gameplay. The story is good for a mobile game. Um, and then Missing Link was there, which is another mobile game that is coming out soon. Honestly, like when I think about it, at the time, I was kind of skeptical, but... After hearing people's thoughts, it actually and seeing footage, it actually plays like a Kingdom Hearts game, and actually, that's what got me sold. That's like a, that's gonna be the first mobile game I'll be invested in a long time oh since dear. Clash of Clans. Oh, double dear! And then next to it, we get our first taste of Kingdom Hearts Four and the Lost Mac, the Lost Masters uh, saga, the Foreteller saga, basically, which. Is a new saga for the Kingdom Hearts, just concluding, just concluding the uh, Xehanort saga and jumping straight into the new one, which taking place in Quadratum, basically uh, a fiction that is neither light or darkness. But we get our taste, you know, Sora's there, and even a teaser of um, Star Wars, and, you know, Endor, you, you know, you know, Endor, oh, yeah. the location, oh, yeah. and the AT, uh, one of the robot foots. Yeah, yeah. people, the people ATs. saw it first day and like. That's not Star Wars, is it? And when people started getting other images of Endor and then the the thing, and it was like, okay, yeah, that is Star Wars. It looks like they're doing it because Star Wars has been part of Disney for a long time now. Yeah. Oh, that IP is going to go nuts. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, Star Wars in Kingdom Hearts was a dream. And it looks like it might happen. And then you see some a quick tease of, like, the sore abilities and get this drum roll, please. <laughs> Quick time events are coming back. Oh shit! What? Qu- yeah. Uh, for some reason, back then people didn't like Quick Time events. I didn't understand why, which is why Kingdom Hearts Three took that out until Remind brought it in. But Kingdom Hearts Four is bringing that back. Good. Which oh, is yeah. what it needed. Yeah, no, Kingdom Hearts 4 was there. And then you get a tease of Dono and Goofy at Olympics Coliseum again for the fourth time. And that's it. We get small infos, the interviews, and all that stuff. You know, Quadratum is going to be like your hub world. And then now we're waiting. As Kingdom Hearts comes out on Steam and all that stuff, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. Missing Link is going to be the game that uh, that will keep us company until KH4 comes out. But that's about it. That's that's my uh, run with uh, Kingdom Hearts and how it made me who I am. Gotcha. Damn, gotcha. I learned a lot of Kingdom Hearts games today. Holy yeah, same. Shit. It's, a, gotta, it's a lot of lore. I'm, I'm gonna have to catch up. On the yeah. Too. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be sure to get Herbs on the ride. We made a deal <laughs> that I would read One Piece and he would play Kingdom Hearts, and read he One still Piece. hasn't touched it yet. Read One Piece. Do you see? Oh, that's easier man. than watching. I'd rather not. <laughs> that's a lot to do. Wow. So I, I bid you good luck. That's that's a lot. Motherfucker, <laughs> well, you don't even read. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so tell me, Wilder. Besides Kingdom Hearts, what are other gaming genres that you fancy of? I know that you also play fighting games as well. So that's another genre that you have um, gotten into. But <clears throat> any other genres of games that you're more likely into? Uh, I remember. I like shooters at the time okay. call of duty i remember was the kind of game at the time like i was there for the golden age modern warfare 2 Fuck yeah. black ops uh mm-hmm. modern warfare 3 which was kind of controversial but i still loved it <laughs> and then black ops 2 the best one the yeah. the yeah. best one yeah. the best one that I, I think now that i look back on it despite modern warfare 2 i love a lot black ops 2 i think is definitely up there for me that was the game I grinded at the time, next to Modern Warfare Three. Yeah, and then the Golden Age ended. <laughs> yeah, we went through. We went through the the Cyber Age where you had jetpacks jumping and wall running and whatnot. Oh, advanced. So basically, Exo- Titanfall. Exo- Exo- exosuits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, Titanfall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was basically it, it's basically uh, Titanfall, but mm-hmm. worse. Yeah. Because yeah. Titanfall Two did it better. Yes, Agreed. and after I and after I went back recently to check out Titanfall two, yeah, I would prefer Titanfall two than any other shooter at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, 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 back then I did recommend uh, Halo Infinite when yes. the company was 
getting on their thing together with the game after season three because Halo Infinite is a lot of fun and it's like the one FPS I was addicted to at the time for the first two seasons and then that was it and then I just swapped to Destiny and then after Destiny went on a trend after Destiny 2 was not looking good I went back to Halo Infinite oh my god it was Halo Infinite is it's pretty fun <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I was way into shooters at the time. I, I even grinded things like uh, Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3. I stopped at Black Ops 3 because Infinite Warfare, I couldn't do it. Like, I don't blame you. How, how long, uh, how far did you get in Destiny? Uh, I remember. I remember I was there for when Destiny 1 was around. And I played the beta. It was pretty fun. And then I played the base game of Destiny 1. I'm like... That's it. Yeah, so base uh vanilla destiny was kind of yeah. like what the fuck. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah, it was like it was slow but I liked it and yeah. like I didn't have anyone to do the raids at the time. Like we couldn't even get past like the uh the first part of the raid, the vault of glass at the time. Oh. Yeah. The the actual like uh, yeah, because you need that. you need to stand on the portals basically. <laughs> you gotta like, stand on the. It's super. I mean, it's super easy. Maybe back then, because there weren't any guides back then. There weren't any guides back then because it was like a rate. It was an MMO at the time. Yeah, so now it's like, at least when I do it, I don't even I don't even do the actual objective. I just stand around. Yeah, it's, it's just that easy to open the gate. Yeah, but. and then, and then I just traded the game in because I'm like, my okay, man, I couldn't even do it. Good. And then. <laughs> and then I bought it again back in 2017 when Destiny 2 was rolling around. Yes, sir. I played all the expansions. I played through the raids. Destiny 1 was a lot of fun. I would honestly pre- would have preferred Destiny 1 over Destiny 2. Like, I would have preferred that. And then Destiny 2 rolls around. It is worse than I thought, I remember. I remember being hyped up for it. And then when I went back, I'm like, oh, this is worse. It's It, it got really bad um, at launch. But the game is so different now, it's yeah. so so different. Like it's it, almost unrecognizable uh, from vanilla D two, even D one. Yeah, and even the their expansion Forsaken, which was was, so a, was a game changer. It was so fucking good. It was. It was. So it was good. Yeah. I, I wasn't I there. I wasn't I was, there. I was there for Forsaken. Yeah. yeah. I, I I wasn't there, but I remember seeing it. It was popping off, and it brought the Destiny community back. Mm-hmm. It did. Because like, it was on the brink of death. Okay. That game has been on life support. <laughs> For the longest fucking time, yeah. and even now, it's like, I, I, they should stop. Yeah, it's still on life support. I remember because I, I remember coming back for the final <clears throat> shape. That expansion was really good yeah. after coming off of the worst expansion of all time. Yes, and I don't want to get, get into it. This is this is Will's it, podcast. It's, it is, so it's, it's Bungie's, Bungie's own way of oh wanting God. to make a Marvel game, I don't and uh, <laughs> that was a shit show. <laughs> We Dude, broke it. We, we broke fall, AJ. Lightfall <laughs> okay. was so bad. It was. It was. Oh, okay. oh my god. The only thing I did like, and you were excited about it, which is even more. Fun it was yes. the most hype shit they've ever made. Yeah, because, because, that, that, because coming off of Witch Queen, which by the way, which that, was awesome. That expansion was made during the pandemic. By yes. the way, I just want to point that and out. They popped the fuck off. That was the expansion that Destiny needed at the time. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to Lightfall and have it the worst expansion ever, how do you do that? The reason. The reason Lightfall was. Such a disappointment is because it was um, kind of a last minute thing. It wasn't supposed to happen. Actually, Lightfall and Final Shape were supposed to be one huge expansion. Um, like everything, the story of Lightfall and Final Shape was all supposed it, to happen it was so, together. It was all supposed to happen together? Yep. It was all supposed to happen together. That would have been like the best expansion. It would have been fucking awesome. That would have been we like would, the that would have been like the longest this, campaign we, expansion ever. The longest, and we would have gotten both Strand and Prismatic. Which would have been like holy shit! Like, I think I think because way think, too overwhelming. I think the reason why they didn't go for that is because well, like money and I think I guess limitations or something. I don't know how. I mean, they did say let's not over deliver. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I, 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 I even as someone who did play Destiny, I'm like, I'm like, this is so bad. I know, I know. <laughs> but Final Shape at least did make up for it. Like, it gave us everything. It was the Destiny expansion. It was so fucking good. It was so good. I remember, I grinded it, and I remember getting the uh, the cast off. I, even after it was fixed, the because mm-hmm. the, wow. there was a patch at the time when the cast off, you couldn't even get it at the time because there was, like, a glitch. Oh, yeah. Quest, yeah. They were also they were also locking certain weapons for, for the new raid, which is fucking annoying. I hate when they do That's that. That's so stupid. 
I wouldn't do that. It's but like, oh, uh, you're gonna do too much damage. It, uh, it was the game that brought me back to Destiny, and then after that, uh, not the best way to lay off your employees just to buy cars. Oh yeah, the CEO. Especially after you're, you do well with your expansion. And then you decided to lay off your employees? Mm -hmm. What is that? I don't know. How, it, that was the second layoff. Huge layoff. That was that was even more big than uh, the first layoff. Yeah. Seen. Yeah. They didn't stop. The, I think the second one was like almost 300 people. And that was... Dude, that that's way too way too fucking much. Dude, that we're, was we're bringing back PTSD from this, and I love it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, and Marathon and <laughs> Destiny is not looking so good. Fuck Marathon. <laughs> <laughs> that that game's not even out yet. Marathon. And like, who the fuck is gonna play it? Let's be so honest. Yeah, like, like I, I I'm looking. <clears throat> I look at the game and I'm just like, what is this? What is this supposed to be? Like, because the, the thing is, it was at the time it was just like a single player, its own thing. You know, like yeah. uh, I guess like it's, a Duke it's clone? supposed to be an extraction shooter. That's what ca that's what threw me. And off. I'm like, why? You could have just made it a single player, and it would have been its cool thing. Or just not make it at all and focus on fucking Destiny. Literally, because they they want to you know they want to continue the story of Destiny. They want to oh yeah, wait, let's do ten more years. <laughs> but no, now you want to now you want to have like you want to lay off people and then have like half your half your development your, team your development team work on one game and then the other on Destiny when Destiny's much bigger. That's that's your fucking baby. Like you know you already gave up Halo. You, you fucking sold Halo to someone else and they made it worse. Yeah, like and they, and they just they're gonna have the same results. Focus on Destiny. Next thing you know, they're gonna fucking sell the damn IP to someone else. Probably Disney. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm that calling it Sony. Out. Sony is about to take over. I'm calling it now. No, wait. Sony does have. They did buy Bungie, but they overbought it. They over um, bought it for the value. They, yeah, but yeah. They, they overpaid. They, they yeah. overpaid the value for it. But, but they're not. They're not like the. They're not like um, the primary uh, I developer. Be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, but fucking, who knows, man? Who knows? Sony could buy Bungie, like that. And um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a <laughs> bad thing. I can see the look in your face. <laughs> but all I know is that I haven't played Destiny <laughs> since since I beat Final Shape. That's it. Yeah, I never, I never even touched the raid. I, like, I stopped at the oh, Forsaken. Oh I knew better. Dude, that raid was so fucking nasty. Dude, oh, I, I was that watching. Was actually, it. The I, hardest was, I was fucking raid. I, I was watching it, and I love wow, how he that, goes straight from the negatives and goes back into the positives. <laughs> it, okay, yeah, that is the love hate. It. Okay, there's there there is a huge positive with Final Shape, you know, <laughs> everything about it. To be honest with you, um, that is going to well, be closer actually, to being finished. Let me let me not say everything about it because <laughs> even I don't really fuck with Prismatic that much, but that raid was so nice. Like I was raging, and I normally don't rage because like. I kind of just like let my team do all the work and I just kill shit because I would just want to turn my brain off. But this one, everybody had to do something. Yeah. And the furthest I got was the second encounter. And I'm like, I'm done. I, I can't do this. Yeah, no. <clears throat> and coming off of Lightfall's raid, it's it oversees what Lightfall raid did. I do like the Lightfall raid. Um... I liked it, but I think it was like the, uh, I think it was, wasn't it like the shortest? It was. It yeah. was, it was like the shortest. It was the shortest. Or like the, uh, the world's first. Yeah, world's, and like some random team won, and of course all the fucking elitists were like pissed off, like, well, make the raid harder. And turns out, a random team won the newest raid, so fuck all the elitists. There was a new raid? Uh, for Final Shape? No, for like Destiny 2? Or am I, or is it just Final Shape? No, just final shape. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 okay. But they are gonna. <laughs> oh boy. They they are gonna come out with new raids. They just came out with a new dungeon the other day, so I guess we'll see how that goes. Okay. He well. was ready to live a normal life, but then he heard raid and just got back. I <laughs> like dude, a moth to a flame. <laughs> dude, like I said, I stopped playing it. <laughs> I've been focusing on better games. Yeah. And then you're going back to Destiny. <laughs> Not yet. I don't know. I only, I only come back if they uh, if people say that the the new expansion is good, but I don't think Destiny Two might be around for long because they you you cancel the code name Frontiers and some other stuff planned out, and where do you go from there? That's what I'm saying. Like, where do you go from there if you just canceled your next project? Yeah, 
I, I don't know. They, it's a lot. That's why I, I decided to just stop worrying about Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather focus on something else. Maybe I'll get back someday, but as of right now, I'm preoccupied with Sparking Zero. What, yeah, one more thing. The, I think this is gonna sound crazy. I honestly would have preferred. Uh, this is gonna sound crazy, coming from a game that is made by Ubisoft. I probably would have preferred Division Two over Destiny Two. Okay, that's actually kind of crazy because I I, I, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I would. I know. <laughs> But I honestly think the Division Two honestly is what the one looter shooter I enjoy more than Destiny Two. Honestly, I would say same, cause I enjoy Division Two like from didn't, start didn't to finish. Did it come out before Destiny? Divi- no, it came out Division. After. It came out after. Oh, it came out after Division Destiny. Two came out. After. I, don't, yeah. I don't think I played Division Two. Now that I think about it, it's a fun shooter. Yeah, it's a, it's fun. Um, it's definitely much better than the first one. Without the DLC, like the whole base game from start to finish is really good. Um, there were some parts towards the end game where it was like kind of lacking in content, so that's where all the DLCs were coming in and whatnot. But overall, base game is actually good. Division no Two way. basically was the game that was first shown for the first game, like which the first game people never got, and then the Division Two was like, oh, it's the game we finally got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's literally what the Division Two was was the game that we should have gotten with Division One. But um, they overhyped and oversold a lot of things that Division 2, no, that Division 1 was supposed to be. Like, if you look at game trailers of Division 1, like the concepts of it, the early concepts of it, and then up until, you know, now, you'll be like, wow, you guys overpromised a lot of shit that y'all didn't do. And then when Division 2 comes out, now just now they, they got it right. So, that's, the, that's the thing with games. <clears throat> that's the thing with games nowadays. It's like, <clears throat> see, like the trailers were promising. And yeah, it looks good, but when it came to the actual games, something was so off. Yes, look at like, Lifefall. Oh, so you mentioned Lifefall. For example, he came Des- back like for a example, ring. Destiny One looked amazing. Yes, but yes. then its entire story was gotcha and repaid as repaid DLC. Yes, yeah, yes. It, you, you know it was like scratched last minute. Yeah. And I remember. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. And then No Man's Sky looked incredible. Yes, but fuck when that. it launched, fuck that. Every trailer turned out to be an outright lie. Yeah, yeah. fuck that. Oh, straight up. Okay, at least we had Mass Effect. Jesus Christ. At least you had Mass Effect. Mm, we're hopeless. Not we're the hopeless. third one though. We're hopeless. At least from what I've heard, the third one was. Shadow we cooked. Andromeda. 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 Yeah, Andromeda was like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's tank. that's when it was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, <clears throat> give up on Mass Effect. I, I'll be honest, I never played a single Mass Effect game. I don't think I have. And I I heard Andromeda like just dropped the ball. And yeah, <laughs> they massively did. they did. And th- th- that was, was when I was about to company. like start playing it. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll I'll play it. And then they told me that I was like, no, no, I don't want to play it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Fighters. What are your, your, you know, experiences with fighting oh games? Oh, my God. With fighting games? This yes. This is going to be the fun one. Uh, so this is going to be one thing. Uh, so I remember when I had my first PS3, like the uh, the old PS3, where you would put up the game and you would see that PlayStation 3 logo. Yeah. I owned a base version of Virtual Fighter Five at the time. Wow. It didn't even have online, by the way. I think online you had to go through 360, Xbox 360 to have online. And that wasn't until Final Showdown was when they got online. But, um, yeah, I was so bad at fighting games. But I loved Virtual Fighter. Like, I remember playing El Blaze and spamming moves that I didn't even know what was going on. It even had its own arcade mode, his own uh, quest mode. It was interesting. Like, Virtual Fighter at the time was big next to Tekken. And then I remember in the arcades at GameWorks, there was Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Oh, wow. And there was Tekken 6. Those games is what, like, got my head thinking, oh, fighting games are cool, even though I'm bad at it. But they look cool. Marvel 2 at the time and Tekken 6 was the games. And then there's Marvel 3, which I remember uh, one of my cousins having, and I would just play it. It was a lot of fun. Even though I didn't know what I was doing at the time, it was fun. I didn't. Even, I never even realized it was a broken game at the time. And then I got myself a copy of Ultimate Marvel three, and it was, it was really good at the time. I didn't even know there was like a competitive scene for the game at the time, until like 2014, which 
blows my mind, honestly. Like, at the time, like, I played fighting games at the time, even though I tried to learn combos. I was still bad at it. I tried it with KOF 14. I was bad at it. Tekken 7, I tried Akuma. Uh, I didn't even realize it was more than just, like, you Street tried Fighter. You Akuma? Yeah, because Tekken 7 Akuma, I didn't even realize he was busted. Yes. Oh, I just yeah. did oh, I was. just did what Street Fighter 4 Akuma does <clears throat> yeah. in a yeah. 2D fighting game. I didn't even realize, oh, this is a 3D fighting game. I didn't even know I had to do more than just that. Oh, uh, Z-axis moving. But, um, yeah, no. I didn't start to, like, learn how the fighting games work until Dragon Ball Fighters, because the, the moves made it so easy to, like, do combos, like down S and then down 2H, this and that. And then I started to learn directional inputs next to a uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tech Battle. That's when, uh, that's when I started to learn fighting games, how fighting games work overall. And yeah, no, I just I, I just watched that. It's really fun. And I've had my experiences with fighting games, and then I didn't start to take it seriously until I remember. And we're not counting Smash. <laughs> no, that's no, not, no, no, no. Fuck, fuck that game. Competitive party game. I told y'all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't start to take it seriously until. I remember looking forward. To, I remember getting into Guilty Gear at the time and Under Night. Those two games, like, oh, these games are so cool next to Blaze Blue. And then Guilty Gear was there. Strive got its beta, the closed one, the open one. I remember I was there. And that Strive was the game that I remember spending so much time on at the time when it was the game that everyone played at the time during the pandemic. And, uh, you know, I played the hell out of that game. And that's when I actually discovered Flynn's. Like, that was back in September, I remember. There was, like, a all the way, an hour drive. That's when I discovered Flynn's. I started to play people that were really good and asked for advice. And that's where I met people like you, Herbs, Waluigi, Marvello, Creator, all of those people. Those people are really cool. And they helped me uh, improve as a player overall and as a person, too. It's good. Appreciate that. Yeah, my heart. Appreciate that. <laughs> and I know with your journey in Strive, like from, you know, when you first came here and all up until now, <laughs> like you started off a little rocky and then you end up being really, really, really good to the yeah. point where you were giving people like a hard time trying to beat you because like they could not get past your character, which was um, Kai Kisk. Yep. Yeah, I remember at the time. I would just spam 2K 2D, Diet Clack <laughs> at the time, hoping it would work. And then at the time, I'm like, this is not what I should be doing at the time. And then I remember December of 2021 was when I started to show off some results and even got to grand finals for the first time, I remember, oh, yeah. against yeah. Marvello, which was honestly, like, my best at the time, which was really good. And from there, I just went through it. Didn't start to make it out of bracket until CO. When was it? I don't remember actually. 2022, 2021. Because 2021, that was when they first, when CEO first came back after the pandemic. Yeah. It was still in the pandemic area, so it had to be 2021 or 2022 or 2022. I remember Evo 2022. Ah, okay. That was when I first ever made it out of a bracket for Strive. Oh, that yeah. That was when that's Kai was starting to get really, really good. Like he got. That's where like a lot of things kicked in for you. I just remembered. Yeah, because remember, remember Waluigi. Uh, season one, Kai was bad. Yes, it was. He was so bad. You could punish Diet Collect on blocks without just offend. Ramathal Super. Yes. R Ramathal Super can go through that. Soul Six H. That was so bad. He even had the worst uh, startup frames for his projectiles. It was so bad. They really made my character ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to hear about. Anyways, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> Keep going with your story. Keep but uh, yeah, no. As soon as he start, as soon as Kai started to get buffs, I started to uh, get raw people. I started to <laughs> actually play the game and start to go from there. I remember, dude. I remember, I'll never forget it. Seo Taku was the event I went to after winning the the next level uh, sponsor uh, match. I remember, mm -hmm. dude. That dude. I remember that. I got my free of uh, entry to a. Uh, See Otaku for Strive and some other games, but Strive was where I remember. Oh my dude, god, dude! Like, I, I just showed off. I do. I, like, I remember fighting Gil. Like, oh my god, how did we get to that? <laughs> I remember fighting Gil. No, I'm sorry, Gil. If you're watching this, uh, yeah, no, we fought in bracket. I remember. 
I made out of that bracket, and I fought Kizzy K. I remember he was oh one of the best God. players. We were all watching this. Like, this is when he joined Island early on. Yeah, that was at the time when I asked about the team back when you guys were at Evo. Yeah. And that you guys just let me in. Yeah. And Seo Taco was the the first to I ever attended as part of the team. I, I can't remember. forget that match. Keep going, Keep, and then I'm just gonna say what happened. Yeah, Kizzy, I I still remember it. I, dude, it was like the first time I've ever fought like a. I think it was like a pro player next to Marvello. Yeah. And because I remember Kizzy K at the time was playing Bridget. That was when Bridget was okay. Before she started to get buffed in the December patch, like Bridget, Bridget was okay. I guess the reason why Kizzy K didn't pick Kai was because the Kai mirrors can sometimes be boring. And depends how it goes, because chimeras are not really fun, in my opinion. They don't and then he swapped a chip, and I took it 3-0, honestly, which was, like, one of my accomplishments I never thought I would get to. And I almost made it out of bracket, but then happy chaos. Uh, but I love <laughs> but how- to be fair, I did play kind of greedy, though, so it was kind of my fault. But I ended up... Uh, almost getting top 24. Yeah, so literally. That's, like, one of my... Match, that's what, a match away from this. So that was, like, one of my... Biggest accomplishments. But, like, honestly. you see all of us hyped up in the corner for him. And then yeah. Herf goes, look at the Kizzy K Slayer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. Oh, I'm like, no, not that. Like, I'm st- that was, I had tears coming down my eyes when he said this. Right. And you're well, just like, what? That doesn't feel right. Be called the Kizzy K Slayer. I, 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 have so, I, I like watching Kizzy K play. Like, he's, a, he's such a cool dude. Yeah, he's a cool content creator. Yeah, I even had some talks with him. He's really cool. That's good. That's yeah. good. All right, moving on to our next topic, and that is, what are your current thoughts on the state of gaming? Um, I don't really know, to be honest. Like, it can be a hit, it can be a miss. Like, things like taking down emulators and all that stuff, but it's like... Ah, uh, yes. I mean, I don't really pay too much attention to it, unless there's, like, something big that everyone's talking about. Like, the whole Steam licensing thing that, like, it's just been a thing for a while. Unless if it's digital, but I would have preferred physical media. And then there's some things like uh, some disasters. Because I, I, I took on the interest of watching video essays at the time. And things like uh, this company called Fantastic, which released their uh, MMO the day before. And then it was a scam. A disaster oh. scam. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's one of the examples. Like, you shouldn't take weird steps just to promote your game. The, st- the state of gaming, it could be a hit or miss at times. Like, okay. squat, like, sometimes it's like you're skeptical about some things, and then later on it becomes like one of the greatest things ever, or you think, oh, this is gonna be one of the greatest things ever, and then later it's like you're skeptical and or you just don't like it. That's what it feels like. What would you say some of the um, misses are this year? Some of the misses. That's a good question, honestly. I honestly, I think, okay, so I'm a Tekken player right now. Like, I love Tekken. Sometimes Bandai Namco, so I have faith in the Tekken team. I don't mind them. It's Bandai Namco what bothers me. That they have to throw, like, a season pass, which, honestly, I didn't mind it at first. Which is what Street Fighter has been doing, so I let that get a pass. Mm Mm-hmm. It's the whole thing with like uh, how they're doing with the um, the brackets. Like they had recently, there was this bracket, and one of the high level players was there, and then he got DQ'd just by the uh, the bracket holders. I think that's how you say it. Um, so he was like DQ'd over like entering, even though he was from a different region at the time. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's from uh, China. China, yeah. Yep. Yep, the, like people were on that. It wasn't. It wasn't a good look for them. Yeah, but they did revert that decision back, which is nice. And then there was a whole fiasco with a five dollars stage. Yeah, yeah, it, it really didn't make any sense that you're charging um, people who already have the game to purchase a, a stage that's not a part of the season pass an extra five dollars. Like, if anything, it should be free because I remember with Tekken Seven. When you bought the season pass or whatever edition of the game that you bought, everything is included in that price, stages and characters. Yeah. So why is it that for those that are season pass holders, why are we having to now we have to pay for a stage when it should be included in the season pass? Because you did this with Tekken 7. I think, to be fair, I think if I remember right, the description did not say stages. I remember it just said characters. 
Mm. Mm. That I think I think I remember. So people might have not realized that, but I still think it's not right. Yeah, especially it, it especially the fact that when you make a seaside resort, uh, the beach stage free, because it was part of the summer free update when Lydia yeah. when Lydia came out, which they can have their hits or miss. That's an example as like the gaming industry, which has made some weird decisions. But after averting that decision, it's like people praise that decision because you should have everyone uh, from across the regions to come to your events and. You know, compete and have fun, all that stuff. Hell yeah. That's, yeah. that's how it should be for fighting games overall. I agree. Now, what would you say the hits for this year are? The hits? <clears throat> that's a good question. I'd probably say Atlas because this year Atlas has been on a roll. Recently, oh, yeah. Recently, the game Metaphor came out, and it was one of the most anticipated game RPG games ever for Atlas. Day one when it came out, it sold a million copies on its first day, All right. which you never hear, but <clears throat> it did well. At- Atlas, Sega are on a roll this year with Persona 3 Reload, Like a Dragon, Unicorn Overload, I think that's what it was, and then Metaphor, which is the wildest thing I've seen. That's, I, I don't have words. They're doing really well with it. Hey, they're putting out good games, and people buy good games. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Sir. Yep. And then now in February, we have another Like a Dragon game, oh, and you get to be a pirate with Majima. I saw that. I'm excited for that. Like, I'm going to be there. The gameplay mechanics looks really nice on it. That's the Yakuza tradition at the time, which it still is. It's, yeah. It can be its own thing. I just love the random spinoffs. Yeah. They, they don't stop, like, hitting. <laughs> the Yakuza, because Yakuza didn't get big until Zero. I remember. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, zero, 0 was where it skyrocketed. Because it was niche at the time, just like Persona. Like how Persona 5 r- skyrocketed everyone's interest. And it's the same thing with Yakuza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I remember. So next topic is what um, moments that you had to be there for? What are your you had to be there moments? Oh, you had to be there moments. Uh, the hype for Cage 3, of course. I, I remember everyone was excited for it. The info was flooding in. People just talking about it overall. Like, I was just excited. Like, I wanted to get my hands on this game so badly. Like, like it was one of my most anticipated games of 2019. Like, you just had to be there. Like, Kingdom Hearts 3 marketing especially was there. Like, I'll, ne- I'll never forget it. Even after getting it... The one thing that was worth it, when I had no school on a Friday, I stayed up until 5 a.m. finishing it. It was the best decision of my life. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. And last topic is what are your gaming pet peeves? And, of course, I'll also extend the conversation to everyone else here on the table. Oh, boy. Where do I even begin? Hey, the floor is yours. Dude, like... So at the time, everyone knows I was a Strife player at the time. Like, yes. The <laughs> and then when 2014 rolled in, season three was not hitting it for me. And I had a lot of problems with Strive when season three rolled around. Wild Assault was the meta, of course, yep. until that got changed. Well, it's no longer the meta. Like, I like Strive. Like, I don't think it's a bad game. But... After the pad, that the small patch, I just got tired of it, and it wasn't. I don't think it was fun for me anymore, and especially with how the fact that the lobby system was still a broken mess at times. I don't know why they went with that decision instead of just the excerpt lobbies. Like it's still a broken mess. Like this t- connecting to the servers takes long. I can load into Tekken Eight servers faster than faster than Strive, even Street Fighter Six. Oh hell yeah. Even Street Fighter Six has it right. You can find a match with Wi-Fi before you get one with Strive. And there's even things like in Strive, you can't tell who's Ethernet, you can't tell who's Wi-Fi. That's a problem. It just shows the rollback, and that's it. Or it just shows like the uh, ping. It shows the ping it's and so the dumb. and the MS, and you and then it takes a while for it to say which bar they have. If it's green, yellow, red, 
Yeah. And people would go for Failed to connect with opponent. Failed to connect with opponent. Failed to connect with the opponent. Oh, my God. I love how I'm joining in on this right now because you know what's funny? They have all these setups, but you limit to 32. Yeah. They have all these stations that look like it's up to 60, 100 people. It's only 32 people. It's, yeah. only, it's only 32 It's like, people. hey, if you don't feel like going to another location, you can just go to this other one while it's empty. Yeah. Because of the, the dual station failed to upload. Uh, I... Like, okay, and I have a lot of problems with Celestial. Like, it wasn't bad on paper. It sounded like a neat idea. You can just fight anyone without worrying about ranks, queuing up with a random person that you hope it's your best friend or it's like a high-level player you want to have a set with. You can fight anyone in Celestial. That's the problem. <laughs> That's a problem. Is that <laughs> it's, a monthly, it's, a, it's a monthly thing, and every month it resets, and you have to be on top of the leaderboard to stay on it because otherwise you have to do the five you have to do the five win challenge again five two uh challenge to like, get celestial you can't touch grass for like a good solid three weeks it's not know. fun no it's not it's not fun i never made it and i, and it. I look at street fighter six ranks and tekken ranks i'm like this is more better than strive ranks even though strive 3v3 is gonna have its ranks but like why if it's just 3v3 what's the point what what kind of ranks is three v three? It's like trio. Like why is it a three v three only thing and not its own thing? It should just have its own ranking system. If you want to go to celestial, then that should be its separate thing, which is fine. Have like a ranked match, like other fighting games have it. Dude, you know what I hate about celestial? That's like a content creator's clippage. Like they just get all these like high level sets featuring this person, this person. Oh my gosh, that that the whole, I remember that whole thing started. I think that whole thing started with Strive. Yes, if I remember, and it, it carried is. on to KOF. It carried on to Street, Street Fighter, Fighter, Grand Blue, Tekken. Yeah, I I think it's it, nice to have the replay vultures, but like, you could just post your own set. No, nah, they don't even want to play the game. That's how bad it is. Like, do I, do I really need to get replay vultured when I think about oh, it? Oh, yeah, you were. Really <laughs> I was on there, like, three times now for the replay vulture. There's, like, a bunch of Southern Floridians. I'm like, I want to be replay vultured. Yeah, like, I, rem I remember. And even the rating update was there. Rating update was not good. It's AI, basically. It's like, oh, if you lose a match, you lose 15 points, and you're, like, top from top 500 to top Yeah, top. you have to hope not to lose, because if you lose... Goodbye, your points, and you go down and 10 it's, times it's, it's the just, placement. It's just ego stack. It's but uh, thankfully, shout out to Vega for working on the uh, his own rating update, which Vega. which which looks really good. So I'll, I'll give that a pass. Okay. All right. Uh, Waluigi, any pet peeves of you? Oh, I'm with Wielder. The Celestial system sucks. The ranking is just a joke. People take it to their egos extremely high. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm the number one on this website. <laughs> that like, doesn't that doesn't mean anything. No, it does not mean anything. It doesn't I, mean anything. The only time I post, I'm like, oh, I'm number sixty nine. Nice. And the, and the leaderboards <laughs> is just for like how many wins you get, and until it resets. <clears throat> yeah. And I like I like Street Fighters leaderboards and Tekken leaderboards better. Yeah. Even though Tekken leaderboards, they have to go through like uh, boosting and cheaters, but it still does a thing. Like Street Fighter does it better with the the legend ranked as well. Yes. Like it just sh all you need to know is who's on the top of the leaderboard. That's it. With how many wins there are, it's playing even, consistently. It doesn't even have to reset. It's just there. Yeah. That's all it needs. We're, we're both master players of our characters, and legends is just like that additional status. Saying, can you take on other legends versus can you take on masters and keep going and staying stuck in the loop? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And most people stay stuck in the loop, or people don't have to climb up or go after. Yeah. But it's just how you perform. That's that's just that's what it should have been. Yeah. My pet peeve is like, yeah, basically people who use other websites just as an ego boost. I will say, features. I will say for Tekken, the one thing I don't like about the ranked is that it's based on prowess. So oh, like, yeah. instead of just the same rank, it's all in the prowess. Like if you have like 50 prowess, 100 prowess, you're going to go get someone who has like higher than that. 200 prowess, 300, 400 prowess. If they already have God of Destruction, you're, they're doing another character. That's the one thing I don't like about Tekken ranked. But maybe... I haven't seen anyone talk about if they fixed the ranked with the latest patch, so I'm waiting Ooh. on that. That's the one thing I don't like about Tekken ranked, but I'll take I'll take that over Strive ranked. Yeah, Strive ranked is not even a real rank. And then there's a um, with Bandai Namco trying to sell an individual stage. I hated when Tekken Seven brought back tried to sell frame data meter. 
Yes. No. Yes, I remember no. this. I remember this. Do you remember this, Wilder? No, I remember this. Because that was back in 2019. It I was remember. the dumbest thing. It was, I think, 2021 or 20. It was either 2021 it, or it 2020. Was 20, it was 2019, I remember, I think. That was when. No, no, no. It, no, it was on, No, it was after the pandemic. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was after the pandemic. Yeah. It was the dumbest thing that they tried to sell us for $3. Yeah, for just for frame <laughs> data. You could have just added it for free. Yeah. They tried to get away with that. Thank God Tekken 8 added it at a launch. Yeah, yeah. They knew better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just hate how they just slip in certain things that are really important in other games. Mm hmm When you could have got it for free earlier. Yeah. Then I'm glad, like, Square Enix actually took accountability when it came to Kingdom Hearts 3, where they actually stepped up. Like, that is one of the realest things. Most people would be <coughs> like, good luck. Hold that until next year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a thing. Uh, why doesn't Strive not have any replay takeovers? Where is it? They, they, Where is it? They, they left it they'll pro it'll probably be in the next um, Guilty Gear game. I, 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 they they yeah. left it an excerpt with milk. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out pet peeved in my system. I also hate that the fact that wire con controllers now are like $200. What? what? Yeah. Yeah. See, Wired? For, play <laughs> for PlayStation. Wired, wireless, fight sticks. Everything is above a $200 range <laughs> nowadays. Okay. If you notice, like Quamba Obsidians, when you see snack boxes, leverless controllers, you even see PlayStation controllers or like Elite PS5 controllers. The only cheap <clears throat> one is probably Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's due to the fact that PlayStation has not allowed any third parties to emulate off of their controller because it's some because of the whole haptic feedback shit. But when I use my um my Vitrix BFG controller, like I don't need that shit. No. I don't need that rumbling feature. Like, I, I'm good. Like, I, I get it. It's for immersion purposes, but it's something I don't need. Like, just let people make third-party controllers so that way they have a cheaper option to play on. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad Brooke has made, like, something to do with that, too. Yeah. For those who don't know, Brooke, it's just a converter that you can plug in anywhere from a system to another system so the controller thinks it's a PlayStation 5. And that's why I bring my own controllers. Yeah. Same. AJ, any pet peeves of you? Well, you just made one saying <laughs> controllers are over two hundred dollars. <laughs> Holy fucking shit! Yeah. Now I have to be even more careful. No, nah, look online. See how much a PS5 controller is. It's probably gonna be sixty, seventy bucks. But if you're looking for a like a natural elite one or like a high quality, two hundred dollars <laughs> or close to it. Yeah. Bund bundled with the PS5 Pro, charging you eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars plus the. The, the, the disc drive, the, 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 yeah, the disc drive being fucking sold separately. Fuck out of here, bro. That's definitely a pet peeve of mine. It fucking bullshit. It 100 percent is. Fucking bullshit. Um, microtransactions always is a pet peeve. Remember, um, remember those days when Call of Duty would have uh, loot boxes. Yes. I'm gonna be honest. I still kind of prefer loot boxes. Than the crazy microtransactions that we got these. I days. think the, I think the loot boxes worked better with Overwatch. Yeah, because you can earn it. It did. It, it did. did. I, I missed that. Because now Overwatch doesn't even have that. No, they just Overwatch. Have battle, they have battle passes. Battle fuck season me. pass. You gotta buy. You gotta pay <laughs> extra money, and they're gonna try and scam you. Yeah. Right. No. Do you it's... guys remember? This is gonna be a little off topic. You guys remember when there was like a uh, breast cancer awareness skin for Mercy? Yeah. They brought it back. Yep. Yeah. There was a huge market for it. Yeah. Like, they they brought it back recently. And I totally pissed off a lot of people for selling their accounts for hundreds and thousands of dollars. <laughs> you know, it's so fucking over funny. A pink skin. It's so fucking funny. I fucking hate irrelevant skins that don't really help much of a cause. <sighs> well, I mean, apparently they did, um, you know, grab all the donations for that skin yeah, and like sent, but I don't know, dude. I, I don't, I don't trust these game companies, especially Blizzard. No, after no, all, no, all the shit that they're not, they, not, they not even Blizzard. With. Blizzard is the last Fuck company. Blizzard. Blizzard is the last company you would ever trust. But yeah, yeah. Blizzard, Blizzard, Blizzard can get fucked. Blizzard slash Activision. Yeah. Um, man, I, I, I got caught a few. Yeah, the microtransactions. <laughs> speaking of Overwatch, um, this is kind of like a very nitpicky, my um pet peeve, but they haven't given any of my favorite. Uh, champions in the game, like legend, like new legendary skins. They keep giving them to Reaper, uh, fucking Tracer, Mercy. What's her fucking face? Uh, Kiriko. Like they just keep giving them skins and not, you know, Ramatra for example. I, I love using Ramatra, and he hasn't gotten a, like he has some legendary skins, but like 
one good one. You know what? That and it was and it was like limited. You know what that reminds me of when Destiny Two at the time, they didn't even care about uh, <clears throat> PvP and Gambit, no, and it was only focused on PVE. Dude, Gambit is like. Is what is Gambit? <laughs> let, 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 let's put it out. What, what, what is Gambit? <laughs> sorry, if, you're, to... if you're just topping on Destiny 2 and then you see Gambit, it's like, what is this? Dude, I I miss Gambit Prime. Yes. The last time yeah. I played that, I played years ago, they they got rid of it. I'm like... <laughs> oh, no. And Gambit now is, is just... It's like... It's like you're it, playing it's like, a flag, but everything... It's like a you. liminal space. It, it It's so weird to be in Gambit. And I have... I haven't touched Gambit in so fucking long. I just um, love the coin flip, how everything is randomized. I do like that, and I like the concept of Gambit, but fuck. I also just don't like grabbing 15 motes and then getting killed. Yeah, that's yeah. the, that's the one thing bullshit. I don't like. I don't like that. Like, some, like, especially when the invaders come, I'm like, dude, no. I will waste the whole fucking super on one invader. I don't fucking care. <laughs> That's what I would do. I do the same thing, too. I don't care, like, I would do the same shit, like, too. It, I would use my strand just to get that one How, how would you no, guys yeah, describe Gambit? Like I said, it's a liminal space. Like, it's it's weird. It's 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 like a fever dream. It's like, like why playing is Captured it... a Flag, but everything's a flag. No, think of it. No, okay. No, Waluigi. It's PvP and PvE together. By the way, think of... Kill confirmed in a Call of Duty game, except you have to get those tags to the uh, specific location. Yeah, but then you just Rick and Morty into someone else's space and steal everybody else's by robbing them. Rick Which I like doing that. I like oh. doing it to them, but when yeah. they do it to me, I'm yeah. a sore loser. I don't it, give a it's fuck. It's being hypocritical and yeah. being accountable I, I'm, to your I'm, actions. I'm, I'm, in this game. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> Fucking don't do that to me. I can do it to you, but don't do it to me. You're gonna piss me off. <laughs> I'm going to pop through that Ethernet cord and fuck you up. I will go through that (laughs) monitor to your house and unplug it. I'm going to collect enough moats to come through. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I will summon a whole primeval into your house. Um, That primeval is me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm the primeval, fucker. (laughs) What's another one, man? Oh, fuck. You can tell this podcast goes anywhere. uh, Like I said, microtransactions, uh, going back to that fucking dumb game. What's it called? Overwatch. First, no, yeah, that one. Oh, uh, first, first descendant. descendant. Fuck. First descendant. I, yeah. I, Have you played it? No, I never played Don't it. Don't play. I've it. only seen people. <laughs> yeah. Is it bad? It's not bad. It's fun, um, and it's really fun to look at. But if you want the fun stuff to look at, you're gonna have to pay a pretty fucking penny for it. Um, oh my god. I still want to play Ultimate Bunny, for many reasons. But. But I'm not dropping a hundred fucking dollars. Or spending all that time to unlock Ultimate Bunny. Why? Is Ultimate, it so Ultimate, time? What is it supposed to do? Hold on. Let, it, let, me, let me look at it. Honestly, it doesn't make a difference. She just... She, More fan she, service. She, yeah, it's fan service. Yeah. Yeah, it's fan service. It's, fan, a, it's a fan service Destiny-esque type game. I look, that, look, look, at, look at her. Look at her. That's somehow worse than... I mean, you can kind of understand. It's like love okay. at first sight. Yeah. PGs. Okay. Yeah. If that would have been cool if it didn't. If they didn't charge you that much. Yeah, a hundred dollars for her ultimate skin. Uh, now, okay, you don't have to <laughs> spend the hundred if you just want the skin. Um, I think it's still pretty expensive, like fifty bucks or something. That's but still. I think that's. I think that's fifty dollars wor- for a fucking skin. And if a game doesn't think- last long, you just feel like you wasted your money. I think that's worse than what Destiny charges you for, like the skins and such. Yes, actually. And I, I, dude, I hate their crossover. Oh my god, they, they. I think they're doing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're doing a Street Fighter crossover. Like why? They did it. They did. Um, what? No, I, I think. think no, I, th- or, I think. I think Honkai is the one. No, no, Zenless Zero, is the one doing the crossover with Street Fighter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're doing it. What do so you mean Destiny's, by that? Destiny's doing it with someone else now. Or they're going to. Why are Gotcha's crossing with other games that should not be crossed over? I'm still, I'm to still make more money. Yeah, I'm still kind of waiting this for a Destiny crossover with uh, Genshin Impact. Here, here, I think here, that'd be pretty here's cool. the funny story. Don't cross over your game Gotcha games with Persona Five, otherwise your game is getting shut down. Really? Yeah, yeah I think it was like a total of six games. Gotcha, including Soda Online's, uh, was closed. Especially with the fact that uh, Persona <clears throat> Five got crossovered. I mean, it's a, it's a funny tradition. Yeah. It's a curse. That's what that sounds like. It's like, oh yeah, buy our stuff. Persona Five kicks in. We're gone. I think. Okay, so that just need to cross over with that. Noted. I think that. I think that's it for the pet peeves. 
Okay. I, I guess another thing I'd probably say is these annoying ass motherfuckers in ranked Sparking Zero. Fuck you. You're so fucking annoying. Did you learn how to play the game, AJ? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, can I say one more thing? Yes. Can I say, can I say one yes, more thing yes, about Square Next? Yes, go for it. <laughs> I love the company. Recently, has things have been strange for them because they've been releasing their high-quality games on PlayStation. And huh. when it sells pretty decent, pretty well, to them, it's like it doesn't do well because the fact that it was released on PlayStation... And later on, it gets released on PC, which is like, okay, what numbers are you trying to go for is what I'm concerned about. That's what has me concerned the most. What numbers are you concerned about? Because Rebirth didn't sell that great. 16 only sold like 3 million copies and beyond that afterwards, but that's it. And that's what kind of concerns me with the, the deal for Sony is that hopefully the next time they release their high quality games, they do it for all platforms. Yeah. Fingers crossed. That's, that's all I got to say. Mm. All right, my pet peeve. I mean, I got about two, so I'm gonna just say the first one, and that is this is with Spark and Zero. Yes. Um, oh no. Do not ask to balance something in the game when the game is already unbalanced to begin with. Yes. It is an unbalanced fighter. Get over it. Yeah. Stop asking like, yeah, hey, no. can you guys balance this or balance that and nerf this? Mm -mm. No. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. no. It is an unbalanced fighter. It has been that way since the <clears throat> inception of Dragon Ball Z Budokai and all the way up to Tenkaichi 3 and now up to Sparking Zero. All the characters are unbalanced for a reason. Yeah. So stop asking for, hey, can we ba no. balance this character? No. Because you, know, you know how weird it's going to be playing... Even though I've seen it already, uh, playing Yamcha versus fucking Broly. Yeah. Yeah. Like obviously, it, it <laughs> you you deserve everything if you're playing Yamcha. Check out my extra large spirit bomb. Yeah, you get obliterated. Oh my god! It, the day the day I get beat by Yamcha is the day. Did you get hit by Chaozu yet? N no, but he's funny as hell. I've seen the broken. He is so fucking funny. Um, I, but I, like, I just just thing. how weird would it be if, if like people are just asking like, or if they end up balancing you know like all the gogetas and how do you balance that as a question you can't yeah. you can't yeah. you can't you can't even balance all of them no. it's it's just, it's just weird to even think about balancing dragon ball yeah. putting everyone in the same level that it just how do you balance that it makes no there's fucking no, sense there's no way dragon ball fighters sure yeah. but sparking zero sparking no. z yeah a game that relies on transformations the most that you want to balance is crazy. Yeah. 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 But plus they give you I know they give you buffs for in game transformations. Yeah, like uh, yeah, like you have certain moves that'll give you like um attack buffs or defensive buffs or whatnot. Or if you um parry certain um parry or counter certain moves, then you get like a slight little buff. But to ask for a balanced That's game in much. an unbalanced game is kind of funny to me and i just find and the people are just asking for balance it's just like this is this is not the right game for you then oh hell that's no. like th this is more sparking zero is more of a love letter to those that grew up on the dragon ball mm -hmm. yeah. budokai games it's yeah. more like the grow up and play the game type of game yeah, yeah. so this is like the true that's what it is it, it is a true budokai tenkaichi game and it's for those people who grew up with those games that now finally you have the ultimate Dragon Ball um, experience and the best part about it is that now you can play online with other people so to ask for balance it's like it's kind of it's kind of funny but it's a pet peeve of mine <laughs> that's like that's like asking for a balance for a balance patch in a Kusoge fighting game like uh, Fist of the North Star oh my god in a god. game that was released what two decades ago yeah that's like saying that which Back then, you couldn't even release these patches. You have to, yeah, you have to, you game. have to release a, a separate build. Sorry, you have to release the same game but with a different uh, build of the game. Which is yeah. like what Street Fighter what two or three did. Uh, Street Fighter two has been Street Fighter. I think it was Street three. Fighter three or Third Strike. Where three three has been doing that. Okay, and then three, it didn't take until Third Strike. Okay, okay. To, 
it's thing. So that's just like one of my pet peeves. And my second pet peeve is people who just rage quit after one match. They're like they lose so badly, they're just like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> or they just can't. They just can't block the ah. mix. They can't. They can't block the mix. They're they can't getting. Play the they're, game. They, yeah, they can't play the game. Can't and game. you know they get salty and they just unplug and just be like, yeah, I'm done. I, I don't want to play this. This okay. is stressful. Dude, 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 dude. <laughs> one and dones has been the. Bane of my existence in Tekken. <laughs> oh, I talk your shit. Like finish the set, please. Literally, I'm like, the same way too. Like, give me my, okay. Give me my if I need to one and done, it's because either your connection's horrible. Yeah. Or it's like I gotta go do something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the only time I'll one and done. Is... Or unless, or unless you've been key charging me and I've been one and doneing me, I'm gonna do the same to you. Yeah. I yeah. I, I was I was guilty of that. Um, <laughs> my first ranked match. Um, I won and I was like, I'm out of here. Fuck you. But then I was like, you know what? Nah, let me not do that. And I, w I came across the Gogeta. We were running the fade for like a whole hour. <laughs> we just kept going rematch. Like he would win one. I would win one. I'm, I was like, fuck you. Oh my, my Super Saiyan 4 is better than your Gogeta. I don't give a fuck. And that's when I didn't have uh, Gogeta 4. So I just had regular Goku or regular Super Saiyan 4. Um, I cannot, <laughs> dude. I've I've been I've been running the fade. I still need to get the game. Me too. Bro, get the game. I need to get it. I need to I need to add you money yes. so we can lab. Yeah. Because holy, f I can't lab with these CPUs. They're pissing <laughs> yeah. me, they're pissing me the fuck off. I can't I mean, lab with CPUs. Hearing someone lab in Arena Fighter is still the best sense. Dude, it's, it's man. yeah. It, it, and this is the only game that is accepted. Yeah, because um, for me, when I'm like playing on Sparking Zero, like I will go into the lab and then. As I was like telling AJ, like if you really want to get good at this game, you got to learn the counter mechanics mm -hmm. because there's like so many different counter mechanics. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to do that. You also have to learn movement because the way how some people are like moving really, really fast. Like I've sent you some Twitter clips or whatnot. Which AJ I got that down, by the way. It's so fun. Yeah. So movement, like learn the movement. And then, of course, combo optimization. Like mm -hmm. I would tell you, those are the top three big things to learn in Sparking Zero if you really want to be good at it. The countering, the movement, and then, of course, ca um, combo optimization. I would say combo optimization would be... Last. Um, last. Uh, I think the best thing to do is uh, learn defense first. Yeah, because you're going to have people that are going to just... They're going to have higher, um, high-level characters like your Gogetos, your Vogetos, or whatnot, and they're going to be teleporting a lot. Everywhere. We're living in a day where Sparking Zero has... A lot of depth to defense mechanics that yeah. in mm -hmm. the fighting game right now. Mm -hmm. I know that is so yeah, crazy. That is insane. That's actually what's crazy. I me. love it. That's not a normal sense. I fucking say out loud. love it. Because normally you see things like promoting aggressiveness and such, and there's no defense. Like mm -mm. they want you. Tekken Eight wants you to play aggressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. When Tekken Seven was like, it's more than just aggressiveness. There's low parries. And, and, and when there is low parries. Yes, that's a defense mechanic yes. and such, but. With you, sparking zero, there's like yeah, you need like, to learn. You need to learn your defense. There's and when like and when you see defense. good defense play, it's Damn. it looks beautiful. All the block it, is it, the best defense. You play. can That's literally, crazy. it's like you can literally use a lower level character in sparking zero. Like if you have really good defense, it doesn't matter what you can beat. You could beat anyone. Yeah, you can literally beat anybody, regardless of what character that is. Mm -hmm. Damn, let me see. Let me see all of Yajirobe. Dude, please. He he just looks so funny. Just like I that know, one, and um, I know about the sensu bean situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, but with 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 sparking zero, I, I'm actually glad that it's not just like a button masher. Which I, at first I thought it was gonna be. I'm like, yeah. this, this is gonna be a fucking button masher. But no, it's it's pretty. There's a, there's a lot good. of depth to this game, and I love that. This is the most positive game review we've heard from AJ in a while. I'm not Dude, it's lie. a great <laughs> fucking game. Like we and 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 I think and he's agreeing without even saying. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know if I told you, but I've actually I've never played uh, a Budokai game before. What? This is, the, this is my first. This is my first one. Yeah. What? Oh, you missed out on what the I other know. Budokai Tenkaichi games No, no, were. he might have missed out, but now he's cooking with with what we've grown up upon. Honestly, I'm glad. That's like, okay. I, I I you know I wish I could have jumped in on it way back when. Wow, that woke me up. But. I don't care. I'm glad to be here now. Yeah. Like this game is so fucking beautiful, dude. It's so fucking beautiful. Like oh, I'm oh. just I'm just glad I get to play the monkey. That's why that's why I brought the shirt today. <laughs> I'm representing. Super Saiyan 4 enthusiast. 
Dude, me same. Oh my god, bro, you don't understand. Super Saiyan for all the way. Well, you were gonna say something um, in regards to Sparking Zero. I think with the defensive options, with um, how this game, this fighting game has like better defensive options than other fighting games. Yeah, it has. You wanna a, elaborate? It has. I don't know what it is. There's more to mess around with your defense than just be aggressiveness. Yeah. yeah. Because like any other fighting games, I see it's like. All you like strive, for example, all you have is just FD, which basically pushes you back and you it reduces it doesn't give you chip damage. That's and you have just defense. Oh, don't mm -hmm. forget IBFD. Then you have fauntless blocks. Then you have the uh, what is it? The uh, wow, I forgot to name the opposite of wild assault. Uh, deflect shield. Yeah, fuck that's that. that's just about it, really. You just have three options of defense. Well, that, four. That's all it. Even though Fatal Fury, I see uh, one defense option, but that's all about. It. That's okay. I, need to, I need to see more, which is okay. Yeah. Which is good, but like it's just insane when you look at it. Any other modern fighting game, it doesn't really have like a defense kind of depth to it. Yeah, like. Sparking Zero definitely does have like th those options of like how to have like really good solid defense with your character and then just overall learning your character like you're gonna have to learn this character and grant yeah there are so so many <laughs> other characters and you could probably do like the combos you could probably do about the same with it, every other character but the real trick is your defensive options and mm -hmm. of course managing your meter and yeah. your <laughs> skill points. Oh, like yeah. You're, you're, yeah, that, you have to, yeah, you have to manage that. I'm still that. trying to get that down. Yeah, because there are certain counters that you can do as long as you have like the right me um, skill point for it. Like some special counters require you to use two skill points mm -hmm. instead yeah. of one. <clears throat> and then when you don't have it, then it's like you probably do like a basic um, counter that doesn't do a lot of damage and it does not not, not allow you to follow up with a, an additional attack. Whereas if you have the skill points, you can do a special interaction to where if I'm going to throw a punch, AJ blocks it with a, with a special counter, he can hit me, send me back, and then he can follow up with another attack on yeah. me. Or I've, I've seen people just do like the beam reflections too with skill points. Yeah. Yeah, it takes two. Yeah, it takes, it takes two. That's still cool as hell. Mm -hmm. that's, that's crazy. Which I, I haven't practice that yet just because I, I, I usually just dodge to yeah. the side i dodge yeah, to the side I'm yeah you'll dodge to the side because you don't want to spend a meter yeah i don't want to spend shit so i just yeah. i go to the side so you have to really think about when it comes to sparking zero you have your long range battle and then of course your mid range and then close range yeah which is that that that's why we were saying this game has a lot a lot of depth to it yeah but to expect it to be balanced is like don't expect it to be balanced. you can't you, you, you can't, can't something you like this yeah. you can't you have to it's quite it's, literally get good it's unbalanced yeah. and that, 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 yeah. that's you, what makes it good it yeah it yeah be. it's like telling taco bell to stop serving dude tacos. it's fucking dragon ball man with their fucking <laughs> it's, power it's dragon ball on, what to expect <laughs> it's like nothing's not gonna be balanced in the dragon ball exactly, game man like yeah that's real that's real talk telling me to fucking or telling them to balance Dragon Ball. It's ridiculous. The it's most unbalanced shit out point. there. Yeah, it, it literally is a skill issue. It, yeah. Man, I can't wait to get to haters in the comments later. Oh, fuck them. How do we uh -huh. play the game yet? <laughs> Dude. Hey, it. the game's out. It's Go ahead, play it. But I would say spend all your... I would say before you even jump online... Learn all the mechanics in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every single mechanic. Learn it. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. it's going to definitely... Be, it's going to help you in the long run. And then, of course, start labbing those special interactions. Your perfect counters. Your regular counters. Your special counters. Um, vanishing attacks. Um, so much. And then, of course, the movement to where... If you can get some, if you can get behind someone real quick without having to spend a lot of resources, yeah, you're in there. Like Damn, you're, you you're definitely like you fighting yeah. games. Yeah, <laughs> there is there is a trait to do that. Yeah, and, and you don't even you don't even gotta spend much on, on your meter. So, I I'm trying to learn that, but it's so oh, it's like just play it's kind of fighting confusing. game for now. It's and come back. <laughs> but and this is this is the fighting game. Yeah. yeah, and of course, if you want, you know, if you want to be a rat. In the game, like there are some rats in there. The best thing, the best way to go to go about being a rat in Sparking Zero, play as Captain Ginyu. Yeah. Oh fuck off. <laughs> oh my god. No, I play love as Captain Ginyu and someone else uses a stronger I love character. How you can use the whole Ginyu force. They made those numbers on purpose. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they know what they were doing. They yeah. know what they were 100% they they know. I've, they, I've been seeing people like posting clips of playing as Captain Ginyu, and they're just robbing people to the point where they rage quit. And the thing is, <laughs> one even, and done. even if you play as Captain Ginyu, you can't use any of the abilities. You're just throwing straight hands. That's it. Yeah. yeah. They, they knew what they were doing. 
Oh, that is so slick. I love it. It's good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm too stubborn to use any other character. I, I stay with Goku. Which Goku? Super Saiyan yeah, I Four. Know. I know it's a stupid. Question. Yeah, and and, and Vegeta <laughs> as well. But I, I did start using Vegito. Damn, he's fun. I know, I know, he's not allowed in, in tournaments, but damn, he is fun. We gotta find out the rules later for these tournaments. Yeah, to see. I'm yeah. assuming Super Saiyan Four Gogeta is not gonna be. No, fuck me. Yeah. Super you're... Saiyan Blue Gogeta. No. Uh, are, are you allowed fusions? To are you allowed to transform? Yes. Okay, there we go. You're allowed to transform, but I would say fusions are except Gotenks is banned. J- just because of balancing reasons. Yeah, you're right. right. Whis banned. Ultra Instinct Goku banned. Um, really? Whis. Yeah. yeah. Ultra Instinct. Yeah, he's he, yeah he's stupid OP. Ah. They made it for a reason. Jiren. J- yeah. Jiren's banned. Yeah. That's or Jiren banned. Broly. Yeah. What about Broly? Super so, Broly. Super Broly, out banned. But regular Broly, I would say. Z Broly? Not, yeah, Z Broly's not banned. But okay. he is kind of like stupid overpowered. Vendor's also Topo. Yeah. I got to find the list. Oh, my God. There's 182 characters. Making this list is going to be fun. Yeah. I got to find the list. And then, of course, what sucks is me as the TO, um, I got to unlock all these damn characters. Oh, yeah. On right. multiple accounts. Oh, that's taking a long time. It. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. I, that, that is probably one thing I don't like about the game. I don't like that. It's a, cl- it's a classic thing, though. Look, yeah, I know. It, it is a classic it thing. It is a but, classic thing, yeah. But it's a headache as a TO like uh, myself. As, yeah. as adult, At the very least, it's better than spending money on trying to unlock all the characters yeah. like uh, MK1. Yeah. 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 You're spinning facts. You know what? Yeah, that is true. I, I have yet to see issues with that. So, I mean, fuck it. Yeah, because MK1, when it came out, you have to go through... Story mode. Yep. Not just story mode, the uh, the other thing. I forgot. The other game mode. The Conquest. The Conquest, yeah. You have to go through or Conquest race, just to get all the cameos. Fuck that. Yeah, that, 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 of, was, I, that was painful. I knew a lot of TVOs hated that. Yeah. Myself included. I hated too because I was involved. And then I had to give like a PlayStation to Waluigi and one to Herbs and one to Fourfish. Be like, <laughs> I wanted to die. Unlock these characters for me. <laughs> I'm like, I did this once just to play the story, but I got to do this shit again. That's why I left my PS5 here. I don't want to touch that And then we never had uh, any more local tournaments for Mortal Kombat ever again. I'm just like, based on the hours of my life. I know. I was disappointed, but you know, it it is what it is. We enjoyed it for a little bit. Like less than two months. Holy shit. Less than two months. No, three. I would say by December, that's when it like died off. Butters had to ruin it. A launch was fun though. Yeah. So fucking fun. Baraka, Baraka, Cyrex meta was so real. Fuck that. Dude. <laughs> yes, it was. Fuck Baraka specifically, man. No, the one you. game where Baraka could be good. Yes. And then they butchered it. And what, what was that? What was that other character? The one that um. Oh, the one that this guy won against Punk. Um. Uh, you're talking about Havoc. Yeah, Havoc, Havoc, yeah. yeah. Havoc. Havoc was nasty. Yes. Havoc, Cyrax, Havoc. Strike. Dude, launch was fucking something Yeah, that else, was like bro. a, you had to be. That, that was, was a, yeah, yeah, bro. You that, came at the funniest time. <laughs> dude, that, oh my God. I'll never forget everyone's reaction to that shit. <laughs> because oh, man, this shit when, was crazy. when Punk hit the overhead and you see Striker just like. Dude, it was so <laughs> it was disrespectful. It, it, I aimed to he, do shit like that in Sparky Zero. Him, he had that look like an orphan just like passing by a family that wanted to adopt. Like, <laughs> that was the saddest thing. <laughs> like, that was like the John Wick moment where his dog died. And it's like, <laughs> I felt that rage. I, I, need, I need to do something that disrespectful in Sparking Zero. T-Back. No, you can't crouch in this game. I know. But you can, can emote at least. You can emote? Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you can emote. Yeah. It's kind of pointless, but you can emote. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just not ha- hard knockdown and just emote. Yeah. What are you going to do about I it? I wish you could teabag. Fuck, I wish you could. But I know if Beerus... <laughs> yeah, but teabag is the, basically the taunt. Yeah, yeah. Which is... Eh. Or you could just, like... I don't know, just, like, shimmy your way, like, close to the... Yeah! Box. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, my God. Make it seem like you're teabagging. But... I, I cannot. Dude, I'm telling you. I got to get the game. You, I'm get, getting get the, the game, game shot. Get the game. I'm getting it on PC. I, oh, I can't, I can't play with. What is it, do you think the game's ever gonna be cross platform? It should be. It should be. Like, cause, dude, I hate that I can't play with my PC friends. Yeah, it yeah. Sh- it that. should be cross platform. Yeah, it, it should be. I hope they get to that. Cause that's another step. On next episode of Dragon Ball.
Sparking Zero. On the next episode of Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> the best one. Next time on Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. <laughs> Dude, please. Like, I, I, I want it to be um, cross-platform. Cross yeah. I'm... I'm because most of my friends are playing PC, so I'm like, <sighs> don't worry, I'll play with your friends. Just have it. <laughs> please, but that's why that's why I'm telling Silverback add me. I wanna, I wanna. Hey, my gamer tag is the same name as as on all my social medias. I got you then. I'll let you when I get home. All right. Other than that, Wielder, um, any final thoughts that you want to you know, talk about, discuss on the podcast? The mic is open. No, um, I don't got much to talk about. Uh, I'm just glad that uh, I got the opportunity to be part of this podcast two years later. And to thank everyone who's watching, who is checking this podcast out. Thank you for having me. And, of course, play Kingdom Hearts in release order. Please do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let them know the order, man. Let them know the order. Release order. Always release order. KH1, Chain of Memories 2, 3582 Days, Birth by Sleep, Recoded, Dream Drop Distance. God. And then you have Birth by Sleep 0 0.2. Then you got Union Cross. And then you got KH3. And then Melody of Memory. Really There's small. 11 games? So many fucking games. But at least it's not as confusing as Blaze Blue Lore. You're right. True, true. true. You're right. All right. Waluigi and AJ, any final thoughts? Final Get words? Get Sparking Zero. True. true. Get it. Ah, Wilder, thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor to have you. Thank you. Glad you're here. Glad you're still a violin. You're definitely family, a brother, and I'm glad to have interviewed you today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have heard all that um, cage lore. I actually like uh so I've I've only ever played one. Uh, I played um, I played up to two. Yeah, I only played the first one. I was like, okay. Yeah. But uh just didn't appeal to me after that. But I'm, I get that. I'm gonna get forced to get into it later. I I've always heard the story was just like top tier. I'm cooked. Still to this day, like has so many fans. You'll love it. If you if you want if you if someone asks what is Kingdom Hearts, just and just tell them just show them fun. Just show them fun, just show them a picture of Mickey Mouse in uh, Organization 13 Hood. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that or just a Sephiroth battle. Nah, mm. nah, 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 nah. Okay, maybe, but Ooh. it's just show just show them the the Mickey Mouse Organization 13 Hood. Yeah, you're right. That does go hard. <laughs> and as for me, um, Wilder, thank you again for being on the podcast again. This time, not in a group form, but also as a you know interview. Glad to have you on, thank and you. can't wait to have you on for another group episode. We'll talk more games. Fine games, JRPGs, whatever, you name it. We're looking forward to having you back on. Thank you. I'll be more than happy to join in. Hell yeah. All right. And with that being said, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and tuning in. Thank y'all so much for um, for episode 103. And with that being said, we are signing out. Y'all stay classy. Take it easy. See ya.